Punnett squares, what fun. Punnett square is used to determine which alleles could be passed down from parents to offspring. It shows both the resulting genotype and phenotype. And this is the basic format that we'll use for Punnett squares. Now, I already showed you this in the principles video that I did, but I wanted to walk through this sheet with you as well, just to give you another look at it. So, steps for making a Punnett square. First, you create a key. And if you see in the picture behind me, I know it's pretty small, but if you see, there is a key. I have the key over on the right-hand side. It says capital T for tall and lowercase t for short. That's all I've filled in from the first step to the next step. We're identifying the dominant and recessive traits. That will always be provided for you, so you don't need to worry about how to make a key, just to make it once you're given the information. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fill in the cross. And the cross, as you can see where my mouse is hovering there, that's where that is. You're going to fill in the parents that are going to be used for this Punnett square. So it's always two letters by two letters. And an example, and the one we're using in this one, is big T, big T times little t, little t. So we have our key and we have our cross filled in. The third thing we do is we go ahead and fill in the first parent's genotype across the top of the square. You can see here I have a capital T and a capital T. Then we fill in the second parent across the side of the square. The first letter goes beside the top left square and the second letter goes just beside the bottom left square. Little t, little t. Then we fill in the square. You can see I've put arrows there. The ones across the top get filled down into the two boxes below them. And the ones on the left side get filled in to the right on the boxes to the right of them. So another way to look at it is this box is filled in from above and filled in from the left. This box is filled in from all the way at the top and to the left, one letter from each parent in each box. So we now have four little kids inside the Punnett square. They're not real kids though. They're just kids that could possibly happen. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to shade the squares that have a capital letter. So if we look at each one of these squares, there's a capital letter, there's a capital letter, there's a capital letter, and there's a capital letter. They will not always all be capital letters, but in this example, they're all capital letters. And so, just if you remember, the dominant is stronger, it covers the recessive, and so that's why we shade them. The next thing we do is we look at the ratio. You can always see below my squares I have these two dots, and the ratio is always the ratio of the dominant trait to the recessive trait, whether it's tall and short, whether it's green and yellow, whether it is flowers at the tips or flowers in the middle, whatever it happens to be, the first number is how many are going to be dominant and the second number is how many are going to be recessive. So if you look here, our key says the dominant is tall and recessive is short. All of them are shaded, which means all four are going to be dominant, no recessive. A big mistake lots of people like to put is they like to put four here and four here because they see four capital letters and four lowercase letters, but it doesn't work that way. You go by genotypes, not by alleles. So four out of four of these are going to be tall and zero out of four of these are going to be short. We end up with adding the percentages. So what percent is going to be dominant. So if you look at our ratio, you can see that four out of four, which is 100%, and you can see that zero out of four, which is 0%. The ratios will always add up to a total of 100. And just so you understand, it's just like money. 25 cents, that's one quarter. 50 cents, that's two quarters. 75 cents, three quarters. And of course, the dollar is 100 cents or 100 per cent. So that will fill in your Punnett square. You have your key, you have your parents, which you're always given that information. You take the first parent across the top, second parent across the side, fill in your letters, shade the ones that have a capital letter, make your ratio, and then end up with your percent. Now, the last thing I have here is I just have a picture of the one I showed you before that's color-coded. It's color-coded 
because that way you can see where the letters go. So you can see where this red T goes. It goes here and it fills in down. Blue T goes here and it fills in across. So if that helps you to have it colored, I do not expect you or want you to color them and make colorful Punnett squares. That would take way too long. But just until you understand where the letters go and how they work, that would be help. I thought maybe that would be helpful. So I hope you understand Punnett squares. If you have more questions, please ask so that I can help. Have a great day.